example five. Example five is, um, it involves all three dimensions. So you get to see how you would solve a problem when you have three dimensions to mess with. It's not panic time, it's not that hard, okay? So the problem is that you have an infinitely long square metal pipe with sides of length pi. It's grounded, but one end at x equals zero is maintained at a specific potential v naught of y and z. Okay, so it looks like this. So I'll try to draw like uh, with some depth perception here. So we have our z plane going this way, and I drew this backwards. The x plane going out this way, and the y plane. This is negative x. It's not positive x. Okay, then you have this box of length pi. So it's over here at pi. It's over here at pi, and it goes off to infinity. Okay. Now this is v naught of some x comma z. Okay, this is a z naught an x. And these down there in the bottom are all v equals zero. Those are all rounded. Okay. So let's write out the equation that we're going to be trying to solve. So we no longer have that symmetry where we can eliminate one of the variables. So we have v plus d squared by d y squared of v plus d squared by dz squared of v is equal to zero. There's no charge on the inside Laplace's equation. We have, we're gonna need six boundary conditions. So one we have, um, let's write it over here actually. We have one, which is v equals zero when y equals zero. And two, v equals zero at y equals pi. And we have over here, Let's call this number three, v equals zero at z equals zero, and four, v equals zero at z equals two pi. And over here we have one condition, uh, six, no, five, five, is uh, v tends towards zero as x tends towards infinity. Okay, that's just looking down the pipe at the end, the potential is gonna be zero. Okay, no matter what you do here, Eventually, it's going to reach zero at the end. And the final condition is that uh, v has to equal v naught of y z at x equals zero. Okay. So we substitute for v is going to be x of x, y of y, and z of z. Okay. And when we plug that into Laplace's equation, we're going to end up with the same kind of situation where we have, we plug it in and then divide by v. So we get 1 over x d squared by dx squared x plus 1 over y d squared by dy squared of y plus 1 over z d squared by dy squared, uh, z squared of z has to equal to 0. Okay. And once again, the, you can see that because this doesn't depend anything on y or z, and this doesn't depend anything on x or z, and this doesn't depend on anything x or y, these all must be constants. And the question is, do we choose positive or negative constants for each? Okay. And hopefully you know that we want to use that e to the kx thing and set that to zero here because it goes to infinity. So we're going to set this to be positive and these two to be negative. Okay, because there's we have the same kind of, we want to use the same sine function here. Um, so let's set this to k, minus k squared. Set this to minus l squared, and this will be k squared plus l squared, okay? So solving for the x part, a little closer here. d squared by dx squared of x is equal to k squared plus l squared of x. And obviously, so we get a solution x is equal to a e to the um, x plus b e to the minus k squared plus l squared x. Okay. Oh, you can't even see that, can you? There you go. Sorry about that. Um, yes, it is true. I do these entirely in one take. I've tried to piece them together. I'm not that good of an editor, so if I make a mistake, I have to start all over again. Um, it's not a big amount of mistake to start off again. Okay, so y and z. This is minus k squared of y. So we get y is equal to c sine of ky plus d k 
cosine of ky. And for z, z equals minus l squared of z, so that means z is equal to e sine of l z plus f cosine of l z. All right, let's apply some boundary conditions. So let's go back to our handy dandy chart here. Do, 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 do. Let's go through Z, through Z first. So cosine is not going to work, and only integer values of L are going to work. So L is an integer. Okay. Same thing goes for the Y, and K is an integer. And then for the first term here, it has to go to 0 as X approaches infinity, so this term, A, has to be 0. Okay. So we are left with, and we're going to combine B into C and E, because it's going to distribute, well, hold on a second. We're going to combine B, C, and E into one constant C. So we get V of X, Y, and Z will be equal to C, E to the minus, K squared plus L squared, X, sine of KY, where K is an integer, sine of LZ, where L is an integer as well. It's the square root of k squared plus l squared, isn't it? And I feel stupid now. It is the square root of k squared minus l squared. Okay. Um, so how do we pick out um, values? And the answer is that we basically have um, so the last condition we have to meet is this sixth condition that at x equals zero v has to be v naught of y and z so let's set that to zero so v of zero has to be v naught of y and z so that has to be c well e to the minus something to the zero is one okay now what? The constant can be calculated by multiplying by sine ny, sine mz, and integrating across y from 0 to pi and across z from 0 to pi. So we're basically doing a surface integral to calculate the sine. So let me write that out, what that looks like. So um, the solution is going to, we're going to take the sum uh, of k and the sum of l of c which depends on k and l and the integral from 0 to pi of sine of ky sine of my dy and the integral from 0 to pi of sine of lz sine of nz am I doing this right? kl okay he has it backwards from me so and that's going to be equal to this v naught the integral these are both from 0 to pi of v naught which depends on y and z sine m y sine n z dy dz okay. so in the case when when k is equal to m and n, uh, let's put that l is equal to n, then we're going to get we're going to get power over two here and power over two here, so we have power over two squared. And so our constant n m or rather m n is how I, I have it backwards from him is going to be 2 pi squared, 2 over pi squared, and whatever that integral is that you get, whatever the integral that you get out of here is. So, sine of m y, sine of n z dy dz. These are both from 0 to pi. Okay? Let me circle the important bits for you with my orange. 
I'm kind of liking this peach orange color. So this, oh, no, no, this is the solution where this, the C has to depend on K and L, okay? And to calculate the C of K of L, okay, we get to use this function, this equation to calculate C of M and N, okay? So let's suppose that our V naught is constant, so it doesn't vary. Then we can pull it out. So we get C M N equals two over pi squared of V naught, because it's constant, integral of sine M Y, integral of sine N Z, uh, D Y, D Z, zero to pi. Okay. And so that integrates following the same logic that we've used for the previous Fourier series. We get like one minus cosine of my. So as long as m and n are odd, then we get v naught. I believe this is a two times two when m and n are both odd, or it's zero otherwise. So there we go. That's the solution there. And um, so we get 16, yep, 16 over pi squared. Uh, or we have to divide by n and m. Okay. Uh, pi squared n m. N M, N M, N M. Put it down there. Um, start that again. Equals sixteen times the constant over pi squared. Sum, sum. Uh, where N and M are odd. Of E to the minus the square root of n squared plus m squared times x sine of n y sine of m z divided by n m. That's just basically plugging in what we got here back into this equation up here. Uh, yeah, I should have told you that this is the sum over K and L. But anyway, you probably selected that to all together. Okay. A little bit messy. Um, once again, if the math confuses you, you kind of need to step through and, and walk through it bit by bit. Um, take your time. There's no rush. Um, it is valuable to understand how these problems are done. So when you tackle these next problems, you'll have a good grasp of how you should approach them as well. These are big problems. They're not trivial, but they are kind of fun. Thanks for your time. Bye.